In this question, we're asked to, on the same diagram, sketch the graphs of y equals cos 2 minus 1x and y equals 5x minus 1. y equals 5x minus 1 is a straightforward linear graph to sketch. However, y equals cos 2 minus 1x is a little bit more challenging. So to approach this, I'm going to start off just by sketching the graph y equals uh, cos of x. And what I'll do is I'll just give myself a little bit more space than that initially. So here is an axis for me to work on. And so cos to the minus 1x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider cos x. I'm just going to sketch it between 0 and pi. So here is 0 and pi. So this is at the line pi, and this intersects at pi by 2. And so what I want to do is I want to reflect this in the line y equals x. So here's our line y equals x. Now, if I reflect this in the line y equals x, I've got to remember that pi by 2 is around about 1.5. So what's going to happen is, uh, if I just label this now with a 1, what the values on the x-axis will swap to the y, and the values on the y-axis will swap to the x, and vice versa. So this 1, I know I'm going to start at 1, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and reflect through this, and then cross over. It must always cross over at the points that it cuts the line y equals x. And so it's just going to come up, so it's going to come up to this line here. So it's not particularly smooth line this is just a sketch that's pi by 2 actually and that's going to get in the way of my sketch now uh, so let's label it there pi by 2 and so then what's going to happen is I'm then going to continue on through that y-axis out to the other side and then we're going to stop there at pi okay it's not a great sketch but it gives me an idea of what's happening so now when I come to sketching what I need to sketch for this actual question I can sketch myself an axis uh, something like this, and I know that cos graph is going to come across like this, it's just going to be sideways and come up like this. And so I'm just going to label that pi, label that pi by 2, and this 1. And this is now y equals cos to minus 1 x. So then it says to sketch the graph of y equals 5x minus 1. What I know is this is a linear graph, it's got a positive gradient, and it's going to cut the y axis at minus 1. So it's going to come up something like this, and this will be the line y equals 5x minus 1. And so we can see here this point of intersection means that there's a root between 0 and 1. So just adding on there, minus 1 makes sure it's clear, and we've got a fairly reasonable sketch there. OK, so let's look at part B. Part B says you may assume the equation cos to minus 1x minus 5x plus 1 equals 0 has a root alpha between 0.4 and 0.5. The recurrence relation xn plus 1 is 1 fifth of 1 plus cos to minus 1xn with 0 0.4 can be used to find alpha. Find and record the values of x1 to x4. Write down the value of x4 correct to four decimal places and prove that this is the value of alpha correct to four decimal places. Okay. So a couple of things to remember here. First of all, because uh, actually the methods involved to find this function and check this function here works, you must work in radians. So I'm just going to underline that because it's not always made clear in C3. This is an idea explored a little bit more in FP3 because it's linked to calculus. This method relies on calculus in order to check that this is going to work. So it means that if we've got trigonometric equations, we have to use radians. Second thing to note is that we're working to four decimal places. That means that our answers must contain at least four, at least, I would say, at least five decimal places. I tend to work two more decimal places than required, so my answers are going to have six decimal places. So x0, we're told, is 0.4. If I type this into my calculator now, and get a value for x1. I'm going to give an answer to six decimal places. So an answer for x1 would be 0 0.431859. And then I'm going to substitute this in back into the function and I'm going to now evaluate it again so that I get an answer of 0 0.4284. Uh, sorry, 4248, 49. And so then what x3? 
x3 is given as 0 0.426400. 0 and finally, the fourth value which they required, x4, is 0 0.426057. So working with this, it says write down the value of x4 correct to four decimal places. So we're taking alpha is equal to x4. Correct to four decimal places is going to be 0 0.4261 to four decimal places. Okay, so the last part says prove that this is the value of alpha correct to four decimal places. So if we say that our function f of x, which is equal to 0, is cos to minus 1x, minus 5x plus 1. Then what we want to do is we want to evaluate f of, we're going to need to take the upper bound for this value. So the upper bound would be 0 0.42615. We're going to evaluate that. If we evaluate the upper bound substituted into the function, you should find that you get an answer of 1 minus 1.86 times 10 to the minus 4. We also want to evaluate the lower bound for this value. So the value lower bound would be 0 0.42605. When we evaluate that in our function f of x, what you should come out with is 4.24 times 10 to the minus 4. Now since this one here is positive and then our other solution is negative, what we have here is a change of sign which indicates that the root must lie between them. So what we needed to finish off is since there is a change of sign What I would tend to say is that alpha lies between uh, 0 0.42605. So I'd say 0 0.42605 is less than alpha, which is less than 0 0.42615. And so alpha equals 0 0.4. Two six one, correct. Two four decimal places. Okay, so let's have a look and see how the marks are awarded in this question. Going back to part A, there is a standalone mark for the correct shape of cos to minus one x and then there is a standalone mark if we've got the linear graph intersecting uh, the graph of cos to minus 1x in this positive quadrant. Okay and that is your two marks. For part b there is a standalone mark if you got your first value for x1 it says in the mark scheme it must be at least four decimal places. Uh, there is then a standalone mark for getting x4 is 0 0.4261 correct to four decimal places. There is a method mark for attempting to check, check the uh, do the change of sign test with the upper and lower bounds for alpha. And then there is an answer mark for getting the correct values when those uh upper and lower bounds are substituted into the function. Finally, there is an answer mark for the statement at the end explaining since there is a change of sign, alpha lies between the bounds and so alpha equals 0 0.4261 correct to four decimal places. Okay, I hope you was able to follow that solution and that you followed how to mark the question as well.